We are looking to catch up on some West Virginia football here at the Voice of College Football. We got Justin Walker on the line. You may know him better as Coos, as in Coos's Corners, right here on YouTube. And it should be your destination if you love West Virginia and the Big 12. Coos, what's going on tonight? It's good to see you. Great to be here, Mark. Always good to come on and chat about college football, especially my Mountaineers. Yes, and those Mountaineers are going to hit the field. And, of course, we all know the deal. You can only take so much from the spring game, but it's still between January or December and all the way to September. It's good to see these guys pop some pads a little bit and run around and try to gain something from it. So where do you think your eyes are going to be directed first and foremost trying to evaluate this football team on Saturday? Probably the offensive line first and foremost because, you know, obviously losing our star center, Zach Frazier, who's expected to go in the, uh, you know, first or early second round in the NFL draft this week. That's going to be, you know, will the offensive and, – and also our right tackle, Doug Nestor, who left, who's also uh, graduated. How will the offensive line respond? Uh, will they take a step back? They do have a lot returning, but you know when you lose someone of that caliber, you know how how does it affect the team? So that's going to be number one. Defensive side, same thing in the trenches. Uh, what do they look like up front? Have a lot of returning pieces, but they also probably didn't quite meet expectations a year ago. They were good, but weren't you know quite up to par or up to expectations. Can they? Can they? you know, go up a step this year and take take that one more step up the ladder. That's that's the two – and obviously we always want to watch the quarterback, right? But that's the easy answer. But uh, at West Virginia, we kind of have that – we kind of know what we have there already. So uh, it'll be interesting to watch some of these other positions and see how they, how they fare and how they look. Are there any uh, particular players uh, either side of the football that maybe some people aren't uh, necessarily uh, aware of that you're curious about or excited to see – work their way to break out in the fall yeah i mean uh i start on the defensive side uh a young man we're all excited about josiah trotter he is the son of jeremiah trotter who played for the philadelphia eagles his brother jeremiah jr is a star linebacker at clemson and he is going to probably be a star linebacker at west virginia he was a he came in last year as a true freshman as part of the 23 class suffered a, a preseason injury that ended his uh, season ending preseason injury. So missed the entire season would likely have been in the, at least been in the rotation, if not been a starter as a true freshman last year. Uh, they said he has really, really popped uh, this spring uh, has not missed a beat. So he's, you know, he's going to be one to watch. And then on the, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, I know this might be the easy answer, but uh, I'm going with quarterback here, and that's Nico, our backup quarterback, because you know the backups get a lot of reps in this game. All the reports coming out of spring camp is that Nico Marchio, our backup quarterback, has looked extremely extremely good, and that would Garrett happen to go down with an injury, unfortunately, Nico would be able to come in. Now, last year when Nico came in, they basically had to turn into a – you know, they basically had to run the ball about 95% of the time, and – Thinking is this year they won't have to do that because Nico is making better decisions. The game has slowed down for him finally. He's going into his junior year now. And uh, don't think the offense would miss much of a beat if Garrett goes down, and that's you know that's that's a good place to be as an offense. So that's another area to watch for as well on as far as specific players on the offensive side. Neil Brown, of course, put together a 9-4 and four team. Surprised a lot of people, especially the media in the Big 12, who picked the Mountaineers last. We all kind of shook our head on that one. I was not expecting nine and four. I'm not going to be here saying that I picked nine and four, but still uh, I knew that this was not the worst team in the big 12. Uh, they lost 20 players in the transfer portal. Thus far, they've picked up nine. Is there anything of note there, whether it be guys that they're truly going to miss or anybody that they've picked up that you like? Yeah. The ones that, I mean, majority of the, Folks, West Virginia's lost the portal this season. Has mostly been guys that don't play a whole lot. Guys that will be a lot of them will be moving down to to the FBS level. I mean, to the uh, G five level. I'm sorry, to the G five level. And then now they did lose Tomo, Tommy Wadder Jaya, who was expected to be potentially batting for a starting spot on the D line. And they lost uh, starting nose tackle Mike Lockhart. But other than that, really, most of the guys 
you know, weren't expected to be huge, huge contributors. As far as guys coming in, Northwestern had two defensive backs last year uh, that are both are at West Virginia now. Uh, one of them last name was Hollis. His first name has totally escaped me off the top of my head. But anyway, uh, Garnet Hollis. Garnet Hollis from Northwestern. Um, he's one to look out for. And then, uh, you know, if you look back to 2023, West Virginia went and got Benny Bishop at corner from Minnesota. Well, they turned him into a consistent All-American. And I think – that's done a lot for them as far as recruiting, especially in the portal. Now other guys are taking note of that, and they're like, you know, West Virginia is developing DBs really well. Let's go see what they're doing. And uh, they've been able to pick up a couple good ones there. Um, and then at wide receiver, they were able to get Jaden Bray from from Oklahoma State, who's going to be a big piece to that wide receiver room. Yeah, Jaden Bray, a productive player for Mike Gundy. Certainly mm-hmm. know that name. And the two West, uh, Northwestern corners, when you consider what Northwestern did, as they were the surprise team in college football going 8-5 and five and winning a bowl game against Utah, and they posed uh, – they, they didn't do that running an explosive offense. That was right. on the defensive side of the ball, so to pick up two corners from Northwestern, not bad. We got uh, Coos Walker here. You can catch him right here on YouTube, Coos's Corner and dropping videos on a regular basis on West Virginia and the Big 12 and college football across the board. And is 9-4 and four that type of season in the cards again for West Virginia to feel good about this team? I do. I think 9-4, and four to, to, to me, 9-4 and four is a realistic expectation. With I do think this team is capable of playing in the Big 12 title game. But, man, the Big 12 is so – I'm going to be so – I was going to say so deep, but there's so much parity in the league, man. Almost, I, you can't really look at the Big 12 and say that team's going to dominate. You, you Potentially Utah, maybe. But even with that, it's kind of, eh, you know, not sure. Because you don't know how Cam Rising is going to look coming back from injury. You know, there's still some question marks there. But really, when you look top to bottom Big 12, it's up for grabs. So I do think West Virginia has a shot. But what hurts them is their schedule. When you look on paper, at least – they have to play Kansas State, Iowa State, Kansas, Oklahoma State, and Arizona. Not, not necessarily in that order, but they play those teams back to back to back to back to back. Uh, that's a gauntlet right there. Now, if they can get through that with only one loss, I think they're in good shape. What's your biggest concern for this football team? Where do they need to improve the most between now and September? Uh, they need more depth at – I still think they need more depth at defensive back. You know, they brought in the two guys from Northwestern I mentioned, uh, Garnet Hollis, and the other one was Jaheim Joseph. Uh, I, I failed to mention his name earlier, but they still need to bring in some more guys there because they lost both of their starting corners to graduation. Um, they lost a safety or two also to either graduation or the portal. Um, they, so they still need and, – and they were kind of already thin anyway, so they still need to add some more guys in the secondary – and the other other area of concern about still on defense is pass rushing. Now they they are they did bring in some pass rushers, but really ever since Neil Brown's been at West Virginia, they've not been they've not been good or they've not been great, I should say, at getting to the quarterback. And they've they've done good at rushing the quarterback. They've done good at you know disrupting plays, but they they don't get home enough. And they're trying to remedy that now. They brought in a couple guys, Ty French being one of them from. Um, Jacksonville State, how good can he be? You know, that's that's a big question. So, Coos, you've got your uh, ear to the ground far more than I do when it comes to realignment and what may happen in college football and where this may all land. Uh, of course, there was that Super League proposal that was out there, and there were a lot of big names attached to it, including, I believe, Gordon Gee also yep. was was in the mix in regards to his support for what that could be. And that's an expand. That's the first time we've heard this thing could get expanded. Most of the thought is it's going to shrink. All mm-hmm. the programs that don't bring value to the TV networks are going to be left by the wayside. I seem to believe that West Virginia is going to be safe regardless. They just bring too much as a brand. They have a faithful following. And I, I think that they're going to be okay. Um, do you have the same belief there? And what would be your best guest estimate as to what plays out here? 
Yeah, I don't. I mean, that Super League proposal, I don't think it's going to happen, at least not anytime soon. I do eventually see something similar to it, maybe down the road, but with a lot less teams in it, probably. Uh, and as far as West Virginia goes specifically, I'm probably not as optimistic as you, Mark. Uh, I mean, I do feel pretty good. If it goes to like, if it goes to 48 teams, I think West Virginia gets in. But anything less than that, I'm nervous because I just, because we're, because West Virginia is a small state. Uh, and you've got some of these conferences out there who look really, really close at academic ranking. West Virginia doesn't have a good academic ranking because of the type of university they are, and, and their their mission is to, to educate as many people as possible. It's a little easier to get in, which hurts that ranking, right? So th- because of things like that, I, I'm a little concerned. But, man, if they look at rivalry games, if you look at, you know, and I'm just assuming them and Pitt and Virginia Tech, teams like that might end up in the same conference down the road. But if you look at rivalry games, if you look at fan passion, if you look at, you know, their TV ratings are always top 35 to 40 in the country. Um, if you look at metrics like that, West Virginia is up there. They should be a top 40 program. But I'm afraid they may look at things that West Virginia is not strong in, things they can't control, like geography, <laughs> population, things like that, academics. So I'm, I'm probably not quite as confident as you, but, again, I'm – but I also tend to be a pessimist, so <laughs> – Maybe I'm maybe it's I'm the tough. wrong person to ask. Well, West Virginia fans, you should feel good that uh, Coos is generally a pessimist, and he thinks nine and four could happen again for your team, and maybe a trip to the Big Twelve Championship game. But like you, I think in many ways it could be defended as the most entertaining in the uh, league in the country mm-hmm. because it's the most balanced from top to right. bottom. There would be yep. no surprise at all. Sure. Am I going to be surprised if Cincinnati beats Utah? Yes, there are some extremes there, but they're very few. Uh, it, it is a balanced league and it's, it projects to be that through its entirety. This isn't just a one year thing. You've got too many schools that are roughly 25 to 35 to 40 in the country most of the time. And that's going to be for some fun football. Agreed. Yeah. I can't wait. This, this is the most excited I've been. I mean, I get excited for every season, but this season because of the new teams coming in, uh, the parity that's going to be in the league. I, I think there's going to be some really good quarterback play in the Big 12 this year. Uh, I think it's not being – I don't think that's being talked about enough, man. I mean, you got guys like, uh, you know, Howard at uh, – not Howard, but uh, Avery Johnson at Kansas State, you know, who was came on as a freshman last year. Uh, obviously, Garrett Green. You got the kid from uh, – that I mentioned earlier, rising from Utah. I, I shouldn't say kid. He's a grown man. <laughs> but uh, he's probably as old as me. Uh, he's almost as old as I am, I think. And then you've got, the, you know, the kid from Arizona. So I'm, there's going to be some really good quarterback play, I think, in the Big 12 this year. So I'm excited about it. It's, it's going to be a very, very fun league. And it's any – I mean, it's anybody's league too. I mean, who knows who steps up. And, and obviously you've got the unknown around Dion and Colorado. What's that going to bring? Um, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Coos's Corner is right here on YouTube, folks. If you're not aware already, check it out. Justin, we appreciate you stopping by and enjoy the game on Saturday. Absolutely. Looking forward to it, Mark. And thanks again for having me.